Right, so you want to be able to access a VM when you're away from your server, and you want to be able to start a VM that's powered down, and you want to do all this from your phone, a tablet or your laptop, but you don't want to be messing around trying to log into the Unraid GUI. Oh, and if you're like me, and your favourite price is free, and you don't want to have to buy any special software, then this setup is for you. So the way we're going to do this is by using the following. One is the excellent Virtual Machine Wake on LAN plugin. And the second thing we'll need is to configure our router to be able to use Wake on LAN over the internet by forwarding the correct ports. And three, some remote access software such as Team Viewer or Splashtop Desktop. And for this tutorial, I'm going to use the a free version of Splashtop Desktop. And yes, if you guys have seen my OSX VM tutorials, you'll know that I love this program for remote access. Well, why? Well, while Team Viewer is definitely an excellent program, I personally don't like having to put an ID number and a password in every time I connect to a computer. I prefer just pressing a button. And like TeamViewer, it's cross-platform and supports both Windows and OS X. And also there's actually a beta Linux streamer for this as well, so it's quite versatile. And it also supports sound, and in Windows we get NVIDIA integration so we can even stream a game, but with one cravat which we'll talk about later. And next, we're going to need a VPN server setup. Now this can be done as a Docker, or some routers have this built in and you can set it up in there. But if you want to set it up as a Docker and you're not sure how, well I've done a guide on that so you can check that out. Well that will get you up and running, but if you have a Windows VM with an NVIDIA graphics card, and you fancy doing some remote gaming, then for the best experience I'd suggest using Moonlight, which is an open source cross-platform implementation of the NVIDIA game streaming. And in this tutorial I'm going to use both the Android version and I'm going to use the Chrome extension as well. Ok, so let's install all of the software and then take a drive and buy a coffee and using their free Wi-Fi see if we can get all this to work on a tablet and a laptop. Ok, so let's install the Virtual Wake on LAN plugin. And for that we're going to use Community Application, so go across to Apps, and then do a search for WOL. And then just click on Install Plugin. Then once the plugin's installed, close this window, then go to Settings, and click on VM Manager. Scroll right down to the bottom and just check Enable Wake on LAN is enabled. So now what we want to do is to make it so on our phone, tablet or computer we can send a Wake on LAN packet over the internet to our router which then forwards it onto the Unraid server which then wakes up the VM which we want it to. So, for Wake on LAN to work, the ports we need to forward are either 7 or 9. Now normally with Wake on LAN, you would forward the port what is called the broadcast address on your network. Now a broadcast address basically has the same effect as forwarding to all the IP addresses on your network. But we won't do this today because some routers, and mine included, just don't like forwarding to a broadcast address. But if you want to see a more detailed guide on Wake on LAN forwarding, which isn't just for Unraid, but for all of the computers you may have on your network, then I'll have that video up in a few days. Now, because the VM Wake on LAN plugin is obviously installed on our Unraid server, that means we only have to forward to that, and it'll take care of everything and wake up the appropriate VM. Right, so forwarding a port is different on different routers. Now I'll show you on mine, which is an Asus DSL AC68U, but if you don't have this router, which you probably don't, well the principles will be the same and you will just have to find the appropriate port forward section in your router GUI. Ok, so to forward ports on my router I need to go down to the section called WAN and then here you'll find the virtual server and port forwarding and then scroll down and I'm going to give this a name Wake on LAN and the port I'm going to use is going to be port 7 and the IP address of my server is 10 .10.20.199 and the local port I want to match being number 7 and the protocol is UDP so for me I just click add here and then click apply so that rule is now added and it will forward port 7 to my server IP here with a UDP protocol so 
That's the router configured. So now we need a way to send our wake on LAN packet to wake up the VM. Well, what I recommend is to use on a computer a website called Depicus.com. Here we configure a bookmark in our browser to actually wake up a VM. And also they do an iOS and an Android app which you can use for the same purpose. Okay, so let's have a look how to configure this. If you scroll down here, you can see here are the sections we have to fill in. So we need the MAC address of our VM in here. And here we need our public IP address, or if we have a dynamic IP tracker, we need to put that in here. And we want to leave the subnet mask to be 255.255.255.255. And for the port number, I'm going to use 7 because that's the one I forwarded and we don't need to use secure on. So first let's check what our MAC address is. So if we go across to our Unraid VMs and let's have a look at my Sierra VM. Click on to edit and then scroll down. Here is my MAC address. So I can just copy this out from here. And so just paste the MAC address into this section here. And now here's where we need to put our IP address. So just put your IP address or your Dyn DNS tracker address in here and put in a port number and just click on to wake up. Now if we go across to my VMs, you'll see now that the Sierra VM is now running. So that means we've set up everything correctly. So let's go back across to the website and as you can see here now, it says that we can make a bookmark. So what we have to do, first let's copy our MAC address from here. And if you see here, where it says M equals, that's where we put our MAC address. And a bit here where it says and I equals, then after that follows our IP address. And the and S equals our subnet mask, which we want to leave as it is. And the and P equals is our port number. So let's bring up a text editor. And here you can see I've separated out things to show what I just said before. And so where it says MAC address, we need to put our MAC address, but without any of the colons in. So just paste your MAC address here, and then just take out all of the colons from the address. And that's the format you want to put the MAC address into above. And just make sure you put it in between the equals and the and sign. And for the IP address, we either put in our public IP address or our dynamic IP address tracker. And leave the subnet as it is. And for the port number, I'm going to put in 7 because that's the one I forwarded. So now then I can copy out this here. And then I can paste this into my address bar and press enter. And if you scroll down, you can see that the packet's been sent. So all I need to do now is bookmark this page, which I've already done here. And here you can see I've got two VMs bookmarked. One is my gaming VM and the other is Sierra. So if I click on to wait gaming VM and then go back to my VMs, you see as well now that my gaming VM has now just started. So, that's the Wake on LAN now all configured. And now we can start our VMs from anywhere in the world. To wake my VMs, I like to use the mobile version of Depicus Wake on LAN. It's available both as an Android app and an iOS app. And you set it up just the same way as you do the web version. Now, we could just leave this here and we could start the VM and then connect to it with TeamViewer or the paid version of Splashtop. But we can take this one step further we can pair this up with a VPN. Now when we have a VPN running, we can use Splashtop as if we're on the same LAN. And we can also use the Nvidia game streaming too, just as if we're on the same LAN as the gaming rig. Now for those of you who haven't set up a VPN, well it's the best way to get a secure connection to your network. You can access everything, the Unraid GUI, Docker containers, and even the router config GUI. So check out my other video on setting up a VPN server and get it set up. So let's quickly go through setting up Splashtop on our VMs and on our client we're going to access it with. So head over to www.splashtop.com and then click on personal and click get the app. On this side of the client apps, so choose the one that you need. I'm going to download the OSX one for my laptop. And on this right hand side here, these are the server ones that you run on the machine that you actually want to remote to. So you put these ones on your virtual machine. Now you'll notice here there's only a Windows and a Mac server, but if you want to get to the Linux one, just type in at the top www.splashtop.com forward slash 
Linux, and then you'll be able to see the splash top streamer for Linux, the beta version. And if you scroll down here, here are the installation packages for it. Now you're going to need a splash top account, so for that, just click on to login and then click create splash top account. So then put in your email address and your password and your name and then click on to create. So once you've created your account and you've downloaded and installed splash top onto the computer you want to use to remote through to your VMs with, just click onto the splash top symbol and then you're going to need to log into the account you just created. Then just click login and then it will tell you it can't see any computers at the moment so what we need to do is we need to install the streamers onto our VMs and then log in in the same way. So let's start up a VM, I'll start up my Windows Gaming VM and again in the streamer you just put in your email and password that you created earlier and then that will log that computer into the account. So now let's go back and have a look at the account on the client computer. Okay, so we've got the VM running, let's look at our splash top. And you can see here, because it's running, it looks like blue, and you can see it's running. So let's actually shut this down. You can see now with the VM shut down, the color's gone from the icon, showing that it's not running. And now because we've installed the Wacom LAN plugin on the server, we can now actually start this VM from splash top. So long as we're on our same LAN. Unfortunately, this doesn't work from Splashtop through a VPN. That's why we set up our Wake on LAN as we did earlier. So click onto the button saying connect, and it says, do you want to wake up this computer? And we just click OK. OK, and you can see here that the VM is starting up. OK, and so now the VM started up in Splashtop. So let's shut it down. OK, so you can see how easy it is to start up a VM and shut down a VM using Splashtop and the Wacom LAN plugin. So, let's go and test all of this outside of our network. But first, we're going to have to actually start up the OpenVPN server. OK, so now let's take a drive and find some free Wi-Fi. So, when we connect to their Wi-Fi, we can use our VPN to connect back to the server. We can send our Wacom LAN packet to start up the VM we want then Splashtop free version will actually think it's on the same LAN and therefore allow us to remote in. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Splashtop will stream a game. Well, it will, but the mouse control for games in Splashtop is terrible. I don't know why they don't fix that. So using NVIDIA experience for game streaming, we'll connect to that with Moonlight for remote gaming without having to forward any ports because we're connected by the VPN. Cool, huh? OK, it looks like we're here, so let's try it out. So, let's start up the laptop and then get connected to the Wi-Fi. OK, we're connected to the cloud, so now we just need to log into their public Wi-Fi. So now let's connect back to the server using the VPN. And now using the Wacom LAN bookmark, let's start up the Windows gaming machine. And now with that done, let's remote in with the free version of Splashtop Desktop. See, unfortunately the mouse control is really terrible in Splashtop. If they sorted this out, it would probably be the best remote desktop platform there is. Anyway, so let's quit the game. And disconnect from Splashtop. And now we'll start Moonlight. And load up the Windows VM. Let's go. And you see now we've got perfect control. Oh, 
Okay, so everything seems to be working through the VPN. So now let's try doing the same through a cell phone. So first let's make sure the Wi-Fi is turned off and we just use the 4G. So I'm going to start up the Open VPN and now that's successfully connected. And now I'm going to send a wake on LAN ping. And now let's open Splash Top Desktop. And there's the gaming VM, so let's remote into it. And there you can see my desktop. Okay, let's close that and now try Moonlight. And again, there's the gaming VM. And let's start up Metro again. Okay, it's working, but it's not working so well on the um, cell phone. Basically, the bandwidth isn't really good enough through the 4G. The reception is pretty poor where I live. So, that brings us to the end of this week's video. So now you can easily start your VMs remotely, access them, and even play games. I hope you liked this video and you found it useful. If you did, then please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for a new video every week. If you like what I do, then every donation is appreciated, which you can do through the link in the top right. So guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you all in that next video.